Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video of Fox Flicks on Dead Bed Spread. Today we're checking out on a brand new video, literally uploaded just minutes ago, about him turning his fields into brand new Ultra Beasts for the Halloween season. Let's hop in. Hey, hi, Halloween! Okay, nice intro. Ooh, new logo as well, it seems. Something that personally irks me is the erasure oh, I of the like that. season. The commercialism of Christmas extends as far back as August these days, and now Mariah <laughs> Carey is slowly thawing out, driving us all mad. With the modernization <laughs> of Halloween, it can sometimes seem more like a cosplay event, where you just also happen to hmm. get free candy. People True. ask trick or treat, but they never accept the trick. Don't ask if you don't want it. The origin of that dressing up something. was from a need for humans to disguise themselves as sinister spirits, so that said spirits wouldn't recognize them as human mm -hmm. and therefore leave them alone. There is nothing scary about Another superhero costumes off, really. or boobies. With this holiday <laughs> becoming more and more usurped by the jingle jangle genus each year, <sighs> why don't we do Halloween yep. right and delve into what oh, makes yeah, us scary? Oh yeah, the of the original. Our fears. Well, your fears. Yeah, Dreadspirit, they get it. Pokemon currently features <laughs> close to 1,000 different creatures, all of different shapes, sizes, temperaments, but ultimately all have the ability to be a believable friend. So oh, then, yeah. in 2016, Game Freak decided to tear apart all, all previous, previous design, design conventions and, and introduce show monsters, the Ultra Beasts. Not of Seemingly this based world. off invasive species, these 11 lads are some of the most wildly designed Pokemon in existence, if they even are Pokemon. Apparently all well, of these beasts are totally something. normal creatures in their own dimensions. Now. Not to sidetrack, but the only major difference between Ultra Beasts and ordinary Pokemon is their appearance. They still have the same yeah. style stat distributions, one ability, and are stuck to the 18 existing types. Mm -hmm. Stat specific Moxie and the Electric type do not scream Ultra Beast to me. Yeah, As these are in-game mons, I think something. they should have had a broken unique typing. Something like the Ultra type, for instance. Or maybe some that sort of insane something. ability, like becoming immune to the typing of the first attack to hit them in battle. It's the end of the game oh, when you acquire them, of, and most games cool. give you a broken feature after you beat the post-game. So why should Pokemon be any different? Oh wait, it isn't. You've gone yeah. sidetracked. <laughs> okay, so the Ultra Beasts. Visually spectacular, just wacky as the Truly lovely. It's easier to fear things you don't understand. Damn it, looks like the video... I'll... Hmm. Hold on, folks. Okay, I think we're ready to go now. By the way, why the hell is Buzzwool flexing? Why is it flexing on me? What the hell? You know that most of the Ultra Beasts have no easily discernible face. The perfect basis oh, I mean, for fear-based fake man. With that said, what are we waiting for? Let's turn my fears into Ultra Beasts. This would be a Dread good spread, uh, like, challenge for everyone. Mind reader. These invasive species are invading okay. your thoughts. Now, a heads up, I had to put the quality on auto, so if it gets just terrible looking, I'm sorry. So, somewhat surprisingly, I like being able to breathe. You know, that thing we do I subconsciously mean, yeah, for our entire whatever. lives? Hold on. Now. This just looks terrible even to me. I put it back up high, let's just hope it walks. Aware of your breathing. You're welcome. Where possible, I wanted to add multiple fears into each Ultra Beast, just to make them that more personal, you know? So not yeah, being able to breathe walk. was suffocation, which made me think of drowning. You know, on a planet made primarily of water, of course <laughs> we'd be able to drown. It's it just, just makes airless. sense. So claustrophobia also came to mind, the idea of being trapped underwater, drowning, but you've no way to resurface, regardless of hmm. how good a swimmer you are. That brought back the timeless fear of being trapped under ice. It's translucent, obscuring your point of entry, Water restricts our movement speed and power, sense. so regardless of anything you do, any effort you make, unless mm -hmm. someone happens to pull you out, you ain't resurfacing alive. True. Enter UB Flood. With a literal ice Ooh. cap that it can tip, and fangs resembling submerged legs, this weird mermaid fedora walrus seems friendly, but all it has to do is grab you and you'll be submerged within its body. Ultra yeah, despite flood. some fire types like being it. literally fire and some grass types literally being plants, We've never had a water type that is quite literally water. Sure, some can melt and become water. UB Flood <laughs> is Orion. liquid with a shape. Not immediately terrifying. I imagine this guy being deceptively fast, using its perpetually oh, yeah. moving it wave body to dare around with all the force watch. that that implies. Okay, that's one down. That wasn't so bad. What's Are next? we even allowed to talk about this next one? So I've been to many a location in my time. 
Growing up on an island, however, you usually have two options as hmm. to how to leave. With UB Flood encapsulating my opinion on water transport, let's turn our attention okay. to the skies. Airplanes. Now, this is an odd one. <laughs> what the hell Flying, was that? I honestly don't mind. True, I'm scared of heights, but something about being 10,000 feet in the air and looking down, it's like I've ascended the point of it being a concern. If you can't yeah, see the ground, then sense. it must... Yep, there it goes, just like I thought. Oh, uh, well, we'll be back in a moment. We're back and it's loaded. Just right. No, my fear of planes comes <clears> from a few things. I'm a pretty tall guy, so on cheaper flights to my bordering countries, I'm squished into my plane seat, so my <laughs> movement is restricted. I'm also now trapped in a cylinder with about a hundred people that I don't know. I've heard horror stories of one rogue asshole making all sorts of issues for the remaining passengers, and it's not like you can remove them from the plane once you take off. You're stuck with all of these people for whatever the duration of your flight is. Until okay, the plane my real plane somewhere. fear is takeoffs and landings. Once up in the air, I'm there. I'm on the plane. I've made my peace. Takeoffs though? They're loud, they're shaky, they're unnatural. If I wanted to fly, I should have evolved wings! And with the landing, <laughs> it's like, I've endured the this whole flight. Sense. Please don't mess this up now, pilot. You ever hear of foreign object debris? And that one unknown artifact on the runway can spell out disaster? It's equally as loud, turbulent, and just... Oh yeah, noble. everyone knows of that. Stepping off the plane, though, makes the whole ordeal worth it. And I just want to add in that flying is still considered the safest mode of transportation. But I can't just make it a plane mm, Yeah. Come on, that's ridiculous. So, takeoffs, landings, nose diving. All things done by birds and insects. Look, I like bugs. I think they're cool as heck. Wait, bugs? Until they're nose diving? Space. Almost alien-like, their intentions are impossible to read. Huh. And wasps? Fuck those little guys. I am slapping bee, the though. piss out of them. Ever since I was young, I was told to leave them alone. Until one decided to crawl up inside my ear and sting me. Ow! Yeah. Now increase that to an almost intangible swarm that oh, you can easily terrible. hit and can deliver many painful stings. No, thank you. UB Swarm are quite small, but incredibly dangerous. One alone can easily skewer its opponents with its harpoon-like head. Oh, So just boy. imagine what a large horde of them would be capable of. Fire-type attacks are absolutely essential when dealing with this relentless pest. No Although doubt about that. it doesn't look like that. a wasp, I hear you say. Well, that's because we already have one. Have you seen Shiny Naganadal? This little guy's a oh, yeah. All that. the way from its wings to only having three legs. And the most important part? Not having two hands means it can't clap when the plane lands! Well, that wasn't so bad, all things considered. So what's next? I don't understand why people do that. Some sort of demon? Oh, good. You know the whole life deal, right? You're born, grow up, find a partner, fall in love, live happily ever after? Yep. You're That's born, you live, you die, you And it's a lot harder to pull off than it seems. In regards to your significant other, you've lived an entire life before meeting this person, had unique experiences, forming your mm -hmm. own views and opinions. Sometimes these are gonna clash with the person that you fall in love with, but your admiration for someone yeah, that thinks you're yeah, cool sometimes. might cloud Not your all, but judgment. Some. It is so much of a social stereotype, the nagging wife and the dumb husband. It's gotten to the point where it is practically yeah. normalized the toxic relationship. Everyone fights. Why don't you love me? Who are they? Are some common indicators, <laughs> but not all. That whole Look, thing this counts as a fear because like, I've done my time. Why does that I'm not exist? scared of toxic relationships as a concept, but my family members or friends falling into one, or me getting trapped in one. <sighs> all of these all fears sucks. involve a lack of freedom. You know the old adage of couples only see happy singles and singles only see happy couples? That all stems from a lack of self-worth. If you can't hmm. love yourself, don't expect others to. The worst people I mean, will that is all over you to a chance. Reevaluate yourself, your partners, or you just may end up like UB Resentment. Boasting Ooh. a sturdy outer shell, frozen solid by its cold, merciless heart, UB it's Resentment is infamous for type. jittering and moving quite eerily, as if its right and left halves can't quite work in unison. Once it takes enough damage, like its it. disguise breaks and its true form is revealed. Toxic relationships are fueled by the unison oh. of two incompatible members, oh, resulting in the two it. halves of this Pokemon's armor housing something enormous, repugnant, and nasty. Only when pushed to its absolute limit like will it, it reveal its true colors to outsiders. That explains why it was so half and half. It could hardly get worse than that. It's debatable. Let's see. Oh god. What the hell's what? that? You don't like bunnies? This little guy is kinda cute. One, it's not a little guy. And two, well, that's no ordinary rabbit. Notice the distinct lack of a face? <laughs> this fear is simple as I stuff. I stuff? I stuff. Just really any traumatic uh, eye-based experiences. You know, I can understand that. Media depictions. 
Terminator is a fun time, but that one bit where he repairs his eye, not a chance. Doctor Strange versus Gargantos, it's all good until- ah, Not to mention Ooh. that time I turned on the TV as a child way after my bedtime and stumbled upon Hostel. If you know, oh God. you know. Yeah, Nightmare we know. We know. I don't like eye stuff, it's as simple as that. Which honestly begs the question as to how Dead Space 2 is one of my favorite games. Well, I mean, you only have to do this scene uh, once. Moving on. You just gotta be Why slow and steady when you get close to the eye. Moving on! <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here! <laughs> you be ocular casually loves yeah. about when non threatened, but challenge this ultra beast and. Oh my god! What the Jesus angel? Christ! You get the full might of seven staring eyes. Ocular relates to eyes. Eyes perceive light as vision, so laser beam. I love it. Combine and that with hate biblically it. accurate angel imagery, and you're in for one hell of a time. Alternate reality sigilith, anyone? Oh, now that would be cool. We're back. You know what? I think that's all of them. There's something else. No, we don't have Ooh. to do that. What is this? Some sort of escape pod? No, not not quite. It's... A fear of being trapped alone in space? Yeah, that's freaky for sure, but it's not exactly... Ooh, ooh. Meteor impacts destroying the planet? No. The of sun weapons? eventually exploding? Okay, Come on, I like that something. form. Look, just let me... I'm lost. Alright, listen here. Let me paint a picture. I'm like five years old. I loved dinosaurs as a child. Like, Makes to sense. a ridiculous degree. That's the father one. from Step Brothers? That was me. When I was a kid... When I was a little boy, I always wanted to be a dinosaur. I wanted to be a Tyrannosaurus Rex more than anything in the world. You wanted to be a dinosaur? Dude, you're one to talk. You're a bed. I was hyped, obsessed, a pure dinosaur <laughs> child. So could you imagine, could you even possibly imagine when Disney released a movie called Dinosaur? I was ecstatic. I remember the trailer oh, being yeah. like the first I five minutes of the movie, movie and I just watched that on repeat. Parents brought me to the cinema, I was giddy, excited for this entire movie about dinosaurs, and then the room faded to black. Yep. And then... Yep, I understand what that's going. A logo? Yes, wait, a logo. Wait. Who in their right mind, like, what? hello? The one they use in the cinemas now has some spooky energy to it. And it's also an eye, go figure. But goddamn, this Carlton screen advertising logo haunted me. Once the lights turned off, it the was logo. ears plugged, eyes closed until it ran its course. And so, so, wait, the logo is what became Ultra Beast Impact? Huh. You know what? Fine, whatever. Oh, I mean, you did what uh, you you turned your fan into an ultra beast, like you said. Just makes sense. I do still love this mon. Sometimes it just arrived, with no build up. It's still just a logo, though. I mean, what do you think made me want to update my own logo to be a bit more spooky? I have the power of fear and trauma on my side. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> Okay, well, I think that's Happy enough. Happy spooky season, everyone. Thank you for watching all the way till the end. You're the true fans. And big thank you to BP <laughs> Bludgeon for the inspiration. With their video covering the same topic last year and a potential revisit coming this year. Ooh, ooh exciting They do stuff. a revisit. Thank you guys for all the fan art. Links to all my socials, Discord, Insta, Patreon, Twitter are in the description. I've been BB and all the boo. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, that is where we're going to end off today's video. I want you all to remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Down in the description will be a link to the original video, so remember to support the original creator and all they do. And I'll see all of you folks next time when we flick on. Peace out.